Hello my lovelies and uh, welcome back to Allotment of the Dead and uh, in tonight's instalment we'll be looking at uh, the delightful family of fruit behind me um, and that's the uh, Kirkabit family so uh, includes squashes, courgettes, pumpkins, uh, cucumbers and um, all your nice kind of summer squash like uh, um, tromboncinos and things like that as well. Also includes uh, bitter melon, uh, which uh, I'll show you shortly. So uh, this uh, particular video is um, kind of a look at what's going on on my plot in terms of these particular family, but also uh, we're going to look at a condition that potentially you can get from these plants called toxic squash syndrome not to be confused with toxic shock syndrome which is a completely different thing so um, let's have a look So, toxic squash syndrome is uh, a condition that some people can get if they uh, eat one of these fruit uh, with high levels of a toxin in it. So, that toxin is called curcubitacin E, and uh, it's something that can build up in all of these vegetables um, to some degree. Uh, and most of the time, they're not at levels really where you can either detect them or whether they become an issue. So, uh, in these particular cases when people have been poisoned um, it's because those levels have become so large that the actual fruit itself has become a little bit bitter so uh, things like a cucumber um, people um, a lot of the time in various um, Facebook groups and um, YouTube videos and things they kind of ask the question so why is my cucumber bitter and it's because of the uh, buildup of this particular toxin in it and uh, that can be for a number of reasons. It could be erratic watering, um, or it could be the fact that the fruit itself, the plant itself, has been grown from the previous year's seeds, um, which have been gained from um, a plant that uh, you grew that previous year. So uh, kirkabits are quite prone to cross-pollination. So uh, potentially the, uh, the year after the um, fruit that you grow might not grow true it will be probably a mixture of a couple of different squashes and things you might have, uh, have grown the previous year and it could be um, pollination from another squash that uh, somebody else on your uh, allotment site has grown as well because bees do go a long way um, when they're actually pollinating these things so uh, this curcubitacin e is um, something that generally will give you things like gastrointestinal issues so it um, presents a little bit like um, food poisoning. So you'll end up with vomiting, diarrhea, um, intestinal cramps. Um, the other interesting thing about this particular um, toxin is that it's been known to cause hair loss. So um, it's a temporary thing usually for most people. Um, there has been um, some reports of people having lost hair up to a couple of weeks later um, but usually within about six months or so um, everything's back to normal um, so there's a number of these particular uh, of this particular family that have got these levels in um, and it's not noticeable there are others um, where this toxin itself is one of the things that actually makes it something that people like to eat so uh, the corella or bitter melon um, the bitterness is down to these toxic compounds um, that are in the fruit um, that people um, actually eat. Um, it's like I say, it's 
it's it's one of those acquired tastes uh as i said in my one of my previous videos that um, some people enjoy eating and some people don't um i'm kind of on the fence a little bit i need to probably try a few more recipes before i'm really hooked on them um that being said i have grown some this year because um it's one of those things that's a little bit of a challenge because we're not really in a tropical country where these grow best. Um, we're in the middle of the UK and uh, known for rain and wind and lots of coldness, really, especially in the evenings. So uh, I kind of grow some things, really, just for the challenge of actually growing it in the first place. So uh, I'll show you some of my uh, um, Corella growing. In fact, I think I've only got one of the plants that actually got fruit on it at the moment, but uh, we'll, we'll show you how that's going at the moment. And um, we'll come back to this uh, later on in the, uh, in the videos. So let's go and have a look at it. Uh, okay, so this is the uh, Corella plants growing. Um, they're growing up um, some um, twine I've put up across the polytunnel. Um, from each corner, there's uh, about three different varieties. Um, all growing up this, um, up these these twines, and at the moment there is lots of male flowers around. There is a few female ones as well. Um, I think that one, that one there, might have been a, fe a female um, flower. Hopefully, it's been pollinated, and this is. One of my Corella growing. So this is a, a bitter melon or Corella called Big Top. And this particular one um, is from um, Baker Creek Seeds in America. Um, grows these quite hefty um, fruit on them. And uh, it would be interesting to see what they taste like. And the other thing you can notice about this particular plant is that um, the whole plant itself does smell of the fruit. There's another little one growing there, look. So, so when you've been around this particular um, plant, you can get that kind of bitter smell in the air, which again is this Cucurbitacin E, uh, which is um, present in, in the plant, basically. So, um, bitter melon is supposed to be bitter. It is supposed to have the uh, the toxin in it. Um, the other coca bits that you grow, um, like uh, courgettes and your cucumbers, if there is that bitterness to them, um, it's going to be quite a variable amount of this toxin in them. So uh, if they are bitter, I suggest don't eat them. Um, even in even if you cook them, and um, there's a certain amount of this toxin that will stay around. And um, in terms of your courgette, there's always a, a suggestion that if you actually grow courgettes yourself, um, rather than buy them from the shops, that uh, you try and um, taste some of it raw before you cook it. Um, so at least you'll know whether it's bitter or not in the first place. You're not going to ruin an entire dish of food. And you're also going to see whether or not it's going to cause you any problems later on. So let's switch you around again. Okay, so uh, that's a little bit about toxic squash syndrome. Um, there is a lot of people out there that uh, don't really know a lot about it. Um, they do ask the question, why is my cucumber bitter? Um, but there's your reason why. Um, and like I guess say, it's, it's not something that you probably want to be eating if you do find them bitter. Um, like I said as well, with the uh, cross-pollination, um, you do occasionally get uh, seeds that are an issue. Um, I know Mr. Fothering Gills, back in 2020, had to recall a lot of their uh, courgette seeds um, because they had a particular batch of theirs that uh, they found that the resulting fruit was, uh, was quite bitter and was high in levels of this curcubit. So potentially all the plants that would have grown from those particular seeds would have been... Uh, toxic to the people that were going to grow them and eat them. So uh, that's uh, again just a little bit about uh, another one of the common plants that we grow uh, in the UK and probably across the entire world. Um, 
it's an interesting family. There's lots of different uh, um, plants that are within that particular family um, with a variety of different um, um, things that they've got going on from. I mean, you, you look at the amount of squashes that you can grow, um, all different colours and flavours and sizes. Um, I mean, if you, if you go to, for, as an example, if you go to the Canna, um, uh, competition in uh, Malvern in the autumn show, which is uh, coming soon, September. Um, you'll see some of the huge, massive Kirka bits that are grown by people every year. And uh, those include courgettes they, and the cucumbers, um, but also the massive pumpkins that you need a forklift to actually get into the building. So um, it's definitely worth a look if you, uh, if you get a chance. So that's all from me for today. Um, all the best to you. Um, if you do like what I'm putting out, um, please like and subscribe. It's most appreciated. And um, we'll see you next time. So thank you and goodbye.